Representative Tim Burchett, who may be our best hope of getting any answers from Congress on the UAP UFO issue from his uh, UAP hearing in the House of Representatives that's uh, due this month, although I'm hearing it's possible that it could be delayed. Uh, well, he is saying that he's heard uh, testimony from pilots who had to destroy evidence of UFOs because they were afraid of bringing it back. And he also has some other juicy stuff to say. And at the end, I've got some encouraging signs for you. So let's dig into all of it. This is Jack. Get in here with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, share on social media, and let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, let's get into it. Let's just see what uh, Tim Burchett has to say on this recent interview. If you had to put a solution then in forward, and it was your ability to be able to change things around this topic specifically, well, then government, tell you, what would I'm you tell do? You, yeah. Talk is cheap. We've got to have a, somebody on the inside, a whistleblower or somebody come forward with information. I've talked to pilots who said that they destroyed evidence, which would be film or some sort, because if they were to bring that back, they would be debriefed, which would probably be a 12 hour interrogation and they would have their, their credit and their record blemished because of it. Regardless of the whistleblower protection, I don't buy any of that. And well, I just, I just, it is saying that it should down. protect them, right? There are some yeah, loopholes within the legislation. There is for sure that we're looking sure. at. It's not, you know, it's not airtight sealed, but they should be protected. And so you uh, don't they, think they, that, that they, they should they... be protected. They should be. And it's in the uh, NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, last when they passed um, 2023 20, or two, I can't remember, whatever. But they, um, it's in there, but still, you know, the stigma is still there and people are not as forthcoming. Somebody's gonna to have to walk out somewhere, some lab somewhere with undeniable information and they're gonna to have to put it out on the internet before they commit suicide. You know, because I think this is that serious. I think somebody would. That's pretty bold. That's... And when he's saying suicide, he means suicide. You know, it's, it's the truth. Great. It's the truth, ma'am. You're talking about billions and billions of dollars of technology. I mean, Congress people making seventy percent return year after year. You know, we vote for a missile defense system for Ukraine, and we wrap the American flag and patriotism around it. So we send them our missile defense system, and then we have to immediately go purchase another missile defense system to replenish our supply. And look at people's stock purchases prior to that. Man, the, the system's crooked, and, um, and, and you know, people just, uh, you know, that's why they send people like me to Congress to talk about it and do something about it, but we got to have more than me. Well, amen, brother. Uh, we do need more than you talking openly and honestly about the UAP issue and how Congress, as Tim Burchett says, has been compromised on the UFO issue. He goes into a little political stuff and geopolitical stuff there at the end, but that was on the tail of him talking about people being uh, compromised on the UFO issue, which he has mentioned before. And that seemed to be part and partial of what he was saying. He said billions of dollars could be on the line involving tech companies, which is one of the refrains that we've heard over the years again and again as one reason they don't want this stuff to come out because uh, a lot of technology is involved in this, whether that's from UFO crash retrievals that has been uh, passed on to these specific tech companies, uh, which is something that Lou Elizondo himself has suggested, hypothetically. Um, you know, he, he says that, well, what if, you know, it, it came out, what if UFO disclosure came out and it was revealed that certain uh, technology from you know non-human technology was was passed on to specific tech companies uh, you know they may be good tech companies but it went to them and not another company 
And, you know, meanwhile, that other company suffers and languishes into obscurity while this other tech company flourishes and becomes a household name. Uh, what, what would the liability be on that? You know, we're talking massive lawsuits involving billions and billions of dollars. Um, you know, if we're talking something that could de destabilize an industry potentially or cause a lot of uproar just in that specific issue alone. And why, why are those tech companies being gifted this technology? Well, Tim Burchett is suggesting, I believe, that uh, this is one way in which Congress has been compromised on the issue and that they are getting kickbacks from these tech companies, whether directly or indirectly, whether it's just stock market you know, options, but they knew they were getting this technology and so they bought stock. So could it be something like that? Well, I think that's all too likely and that seems to be what Tim is suggesting here. So, you know, has Kirsten Gillibrand bought stock recently and Lockheed Martin, uh, you know, has, has Marco Rubio, has Senator Ernst? I would be very curious to find out. Uh, and, you know, that, that could be an important question going forward, right? Um, but, you know, that's assuming they're, they're still getting this stuff. Uh, you know, who knows, but whatever, historically, certain tech companies definitely seem to have received this stuff. And that is even something that Colonel Corso talked about in the book, The Day After Roswell, where it was his job to farm out non-human technology to various companies to get them to reverse engineer this and to get it out into the, uh, you know, for the public consumption. So the American people could benefit from this. And from that, we got things like the, the modern computer age and uh, Kevlar and to a certain extent, fiber optic technology. So, and various other stuff. And uh, for sure, these tech companies are sitting on technology the rest of us do not have. And, you know, whether that's for black ops or their own obscure reasons, who knows? But uh, it's definitely there, and I think that could be a very significant factor in the secrecy of all of this. And Tim Burchett is on it, and he is calling it out. Amen. You go, man. You go. Uh, at least somebody in Congress seems to be honest. I, I really hope the, uh, the House hearing on UAP does happen this month and that it is really gangbusters and i hope it does not involve arrow or sean kirkpatrick in any way get those pilots out testifying about this evidence that they felt they had the need to destroy uh, otherwise their career would be tarnished so uh yeah so the stigma s still seems to be there it's also worth noting that he says that the only way we're really going to get disclosure is if somebody walks out from some lab somewhere with undeniable information and they're going to have to put it out on the internet before they commit suicide. So, uh, which is all true. However, um, you know, what happens if they did commit suicide immediately after? So, you know, who, who's going to bite, who's going to take that bullet? Who's going to take one for the team? And I, I don't think anybody should have to do that. I, I really, and even then, would, would it be worth it? Because there would still be plenty of people saying, oh, it was all staged, it was all fake, it's all disinfo. So why bother? Why sacrifice yourself for that? Um, but, uh, but yeah, we do need somebody coming out of these labs saying something like that. Uh, I did want to end on a positive note, and that is that there are encouraging signs in all of this. Even some of the most hardened skeptics and debunkers are starting to get on board a little bit. Mick West recently had this tweet. Imagine if someone once worked on a highly compartmentalized program to reverse engineer captured foreign tech. They get convinced they are, were actually working on an alien craft. They tell the story for years convince some UAP folk, and end up testifying to Congress. Possible? So, Mick West is finally getting on board with the alien or UFO crash retrievals. 
And this is his backwards way of uh, trying to debunk it or pre-bunk it before this information really gets out to the public. So he is setting the stage for debunking uh, UFO crash retrievals, and this is how he plans to do it. But at least he is acknowledging the reality of UFO crash retrievals in reverse engineering efforts. He's putting his own Mick West spin on it. You know, it's all seagulls. It's all, it's all you know, uh, uh, Russian or Chinese tech that we're trying to reverse engineering, uh, reverse engineer, and, and they just got tricked into thinking that it was alien. So, um, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm sure that was the case in 1947, right? Anyway, so, but, you know, that, that is one of the stories that they, they floated uh, you know, throughout the decades, trying to suggest Roswell was the, was the Germans or something like that. And, uh, or, or later, one of the UFO crashes, uh, they tried to uh, ascribe it to the Soviets. So, uh, you know, that, that's one of the oldest stories in the book, and that's why I am so skeptical of all the German UFO claims because uh, they have put those narratives out there to try to debunk uh, genuine UFO crashes and retrievals. They didn't want people knowing about that or thinking about that, so they put it out there that it was the Germans. Uh, anyway, I, I can go more into that later, but uh, yeah, you know, look at that Hal O'Donnell story that George Knapp told, uh, and I made at least one video about that. He was a director of Area 51. They had a live alien there <laughs> and worked on crash retrievals and stuff like that. And he told George about it over a few years. And then later in his life, he was forced by the men in black to recant and change his story to it was all the Germans. And it was uh, the, they weren't aliens. They were victims of the Germans. So, um, you know, that was disinformation, and that is one example of the U.S. government pinning alien stuff on the Germans. Uh, or, or in other cases, it's been the Soviets. So that is just one piece of disinformation, and that's why I'm skeptical about all that. But that is a, a different subject, uh, but it does go into the whole, um, you know, how, how do they debunk stuff? Well, it looks like Mick West is going to try to debunk uh, reverse engineering UFOs by saying it's actually Russian or Chinese technology. So it's the same idea, uh, just applied in a different way. But at least he is acknowledging the reality of these programs, which itself is pretty major. So uh, anyway, I, I, I can't wait for Tim Burchett's hearing. I hope it's gangbusters. I you know just have the highest hopes for that hearing in a way I do not have any hopes for anything related to uh, Arrow or Sean Kirkpatrick or Kirsten or uh, Gillibrand or, uh, you know, Rubio or any of those guys. So uh, the House of Representatives may be our best hope and uh, the Senate maybe not so much. And he may have hinted at some of the reasons why in this very video. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. That'd be super groovy. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. I would love to see you guys there. And if you could share this video on social media when it drops, that would be super helpful. In the meantime, there are plenty of other videos on the channel for you to check out. And I'll see you next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.